Hey guys, Joe here, and today we are doing the next settlement in my modern Massachusetts build series. So lay back, relax, and listen to the soothing sounds of Malvars! If you're new to the channel and you like this kind of video, please consider getting subscribed. It would help the channel grow greatly. Also, maybe use my affiliate links down below. Everything will be in the description, including the list of mods I used to create this settlement. For those of you new to the series, you can click on the card above. It will take you to a playlist to see the settlements I've already done. And my goal is to create a Massachusetts that has started to rebuild. In the base game and even with some of the add-ons and DLCs, you never actually repair the entire Commonwealth. It stays destroyed and you just kind of live in different settlements. Well, I'm not happy with that. So what I've done is I've gone in with the idiom that I want to create a wonderful place for people to live and be productive and rebuild society in a positive way. Here we are at the entrance to Jamaica Plains. This is one of the settlements you get through a radiant quest where you're supposed to clear out the feral ghouls that have infested the town. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and show you a clip I did earlier where I went ahead and went through the original version of Jamaica Plain so you can see what the town looks like when it's still infested. As you can see from up here in the sky, I don't want to get too close to the ground because there are a ton of feral ghouls in it. The entire town is basically destroyed. A mission does bring you here as well, but we're not going to go into that here. But as you can see, Jamaica Plains is actually this little diamond-shaped area here. It's not a lot of room. It's one of the smaller settlements in the game. And this main building here is where the workshop is. You can see it's pretty much destroyed. It's a two-level building. Originally, it was supposed to be two-level all the way across, but because of the damage, that doesn't stay that way for long. And again, there's not a whole lot of places for defense and not a whole lot of room for improvement, supposedly. That's where mods come in, and that's where I come in. So let's go ahead and pop back into the regular game, and we will take a look at what I've done. Now one thing here is the Pip-Boy comes up, and a lot of people have seen me maybe do it, but I haven't actually talked about it, is Cheat Terminal. You get a portable cheat terminal and a placeable cheat terminal. I love these for the game. Now, to be clear, I played through this game 100% legit six, seven times. Never cheated, didn't use any kind of console commands, anything like that. Since I've completed the game, I can do whatever I want, and it makes me feel good. Don't be afraid to play with your game, guys. Especially if you pay for the dang game. Because you can change things like workshop size, everything. But here we are. It's daylight, so let's pop up into the air now that we're in the settlement as it appears today. And I'll give you a quick overview. So yeah, as you can see, my settlement is actually bigger than the original boundaries. And we'll be talking about that in a second. But also, it looks like the only real live place in a very large radius. And I do that on purpose. I want this to look like a safe haven. I was going to say sanctuary, but there's a village called Sanctuary or a settlement called Sanctuary. It's actually where you're from. Spoiler! But yeah, as you can see, I've created defenses. I created a natural-looking rock wall. Well, natural-ish, as best you can using the assets that are in the game in order to create a very well-defended settlement, which is another big thing because while I'm trying to rebuild the settlements and rebuild the Commonwealth, not everybody sees it the same way, so you get attacked quite often. And in doing this, I help keep the town safe. So let's pop back into the character, and as you can see, like most of my settlement, there is only one way in and one way out. And that is right here. And some of you that have done these settlement builds in the past will note that uh, all of this is outside the actual natural range of the settlement. Here, let me show you what I did. Let me go ahead and show you the stats for my settlement here. As you can see, I have 23 settlers, 35 food, 100 water, 960 power, 870 defense, and 35 beds. So I do have room for this settlement to grow, and we will be looking at all of that in a moment. It's at 84 happiness, and it is climbing because I recently added some more relaxation stuff to the settlement. But 
As you can see, I've built outside of the natural borders of the town. And the way you do that is by using Place Everything, listed in the description of all the mods I use. By doing that, it allows you to turn off things like Workshop Timeout, which allows you to step outside of the natural bounds of your settlement. Extra Object Selection, which allows you to select objects that are outside of your natural build area. As you can see, I'm outside the build area right now. You can see the red outline for the settlement and you can see how much of the settlement is actually outside of it. Now all of the housing, bar that one guard station, are outside and I just got attacked by someone. Defenses took care of it. But let's do a quick walk around the outside. Again, I used rock walls in order to create an artificial barrier between raiders, super mutants, and the like, and it is heavily armed with 14.5 millimeter cannons, 20 millimeter cannons, heavy laser turrets, and machine guns. This building is not usable. As you can see, it's outside the border of the settlement, but it makes a good platform for putting up defense, and it just kind of looks nice. Lots of turrets, turrets, I don't know why I say turrets, but lots of turrets, defenses, and walls. Another thing I did was put a lot of foliage out. I like the way it looks, I like the way the light kind of shines through and just kind of gives it a natural look and obviously with all the details up you see good shadows and light rays. I did put some defensive blocks around some of the exposed defenses and each one of these is actually connected to a power source that I push through the wall so it can't be destroyed but also they are not daisy chained together. If you have all of your security pieces linked together if the main one goes down that's connected to the power source they all go down so don't connect them all together there is some nav meshing issues especially with the big rock wall that i put up where some settlers will appear outside of the natural border and then they will just magically reappear inside the settlement Anywhere that I didn't want people walking in and out of, I did add walls because this is a natural entrance into that side of the settlement normally. I also cleaned up the roads and the areas directly around the settlement. I don't like stuff like that. You know, I'll get rid of these things so that the settlement area just looks better. And with Place Everything installed, it allows me to select a bunch of this stuff. Now, you will have to use the disable command sometimes for like these leaf piles and I'll show you real quick but you have to be careful because if you do it wrong you can actually delete like the entire road so you have to make sure you're clicked on the leaf pile and then when you use disable it will delete that and you can do that for the rocks and individual bushes now some things are part of the actual map itself and can't be deleted but for the most part almost anything that is a decal or placeable item is removable and I do have to move over here and delete some of that. And I also used Workshop Anywhere to be able to place some items outside the natural borders of the settlement. I pushed the water tower out here. As long as you place it inside the border first, wherever you put it, it will still generate the resource for your settlement. So it doesn't make any noise inside the settlement and it still produces water and it's out of the way because land is at a premium in this settlement. I've made the wall come around to the church, which makes the church a natural border. That door is still barred and locked from the mission that I'm not going to spoil. And that brings us back around to the front entrance. Again, I still need to clean up this area. I didn't want to remove too many things because I want it to look like this is an oasis versus this is common. So now we'll just stay in first person mode for most of the rest of the video here unless I need to pop up in the sky for some reason. When you first come into the settlement, the first thing you walk into, this was a parking lot originally. Now it is shops and there is a security guard who is supposed to be over there. Hi, how are you? Nav mesh problems, dang it. But I used a couple of covenant houses, which you get in the game if you have this mod installed. I'll have to double check. But I put some single stall shops in here, armor, general, and clothing. I like to put cash registers on the counters just because these are where traders and visitors come in to purchase their items so they need to pay for them. You'll also see that I do block off doors with walls so that you can't get in or out of that door to try to prevent nav mesh problems. 
This side is my clinic. You have the Foraptor from vault -Tec Workshop, a full clinic uh, kiosk with do-it-yourself, filling up the shelves with decorations and chems and all that good stuff. A computer to log in injuries and settlers and keep track of health. Bookshelf, I figure the doctors would be keeping their medical journals in that bookshelf. And a surgery chair, which is separated by a wall and some curtains. That's the main shopping area that you first come into. I figure traders would come in here first, so you might as well have it there. I also have a seating area. Oh, barber chair. There's a barber's chair. People come here and get their hair cut. But I made a little bar here, again, for traders and visitors with some tables that are lit up so you can come in here, sit down, and enjoy a drink. Light bulb went missing. That happens from time to time. All of my doctors in all of my settlements wear Cabot House clothing because Cabot House clothing does not have the vault Tech logo or the walkie-talkie on the lapel. Coming down here, this building is no longer used, but I did go ahead and keep it in the wall area because it just, again, looks nice. I use foliage where there's some clipping issues to try to hide some of that as well as some of the ground. I did replace a lot of the foliage in the planters in order to make them look like they're alive again, which looks nice in my opinion. And this was the only building that I actually kept. This was the two-story building with the workshop in it from the beginning. However, you can see I did modify it quite extensively. I saved this part of the house because that part was not completely destroyed. Walking in here, it's kind of like a greeting area for new guests. Couch with the TV for lounging around. And I actually brought the mayor's terminal from another building because I wanted to have it in this settlement and now I have a working terminal in this settlement so I figure people come in here and sign in. Here's the original workshop. I didn't need to replace it with the workshop anywhere because it, it gives you full access to your settlement resources anyway. I put security in this section of the building so there's a security desk and some bunk beds for the security force as well as a jail cell with a bunk bed and Clipping settlers. We'll just pretend they're in jail for now. There is an armor workbench here so that you can work on a power armor. Let's go ahead upstairs. Well, let's not kill anybody. Let's head upstairs. Excuse me. Excuse me. And the second floor is some beds. And I did put a lot of beds in all of these floors because of the size restrictions of the settlement. There are dressers on each level, of course. Some of them are shared, a couple of desks here and there. And then we come down into this section, which is all of the new construction I did on the building. I did leave a doorway here with a stairway coming up to it. So you can just come directly in here instead of going through the security area. And again, bedding and lockers instead of dressers so that I can get more beds on this floor. There is a desk here so people can sit and write and do whatever as well as a bathroom with three shower stalls and one toilet. They all share resources and toilets in this settlement. There was just no way around that. I could not give everybody their own bathroom as much as I wanted to. Coming up to the third floor, I turned this into a relaxation parlor for settlers. So you have some bars and bar stools. They can come here, grab a drink from the bar there, which is manned, and just have a seat and chillax. You can play slot machines, and they are all hooked up to power. Work your way through here. There's some couches just for sitting and relaxing. And then just a regular bathroom. No shower necessary on this floor. A manned drink station. And another couch for sitting. This is actually the roof of the other building, as you can see. I use stairs in order to hide the elevation changes. And one table up here I figured, you know, might as well have a lot of seating area. It's the early part of the day, so I don't know why nobody's working. Get to work, you lazy bums! I haven't fully decided what to do in here. I'm definitely putting a bed on that rug. I thought there was a bed there, and it may have actually clipped through the ceiling or disappeared, which does happen from time to time. But I think I'll put some storage shelves up there for items. One set of stairs right there, and then a bunch of storage shelves. This originally was going to be the settlers or the the sole survivor. Excuse me, I always get all the different games mixed up. But this was going to be my sole survivor's house or apartment but NPCs just keep on clipping up here 
and I got tired of it. So I went ahead and turned this into more sleeping area as well as a computer terminal area so that people can come in here and use computers, read books, as well as a bunch more beds and a couple of shower stalls. Figure this has the biggest openest area. Yeah, that's a real word, openest. So the workers of the week get to stay up here or the people that are running the settlement. Coming outside, we'll come down these stairs and cut through the building. I actually get myself turned around quite a bit here. And then I use two more cabin houses and I actually place them side by side. You can do that by lining up the doors because the buildings are actually symmetrical or at least this version of it is and then I just block off the doors with walls. In this one I put a bar again with a kitchen and a drink station. This is all manned. They're just stuck inside the house for some reason and some chairs and tables. Out here I placed a wooden deck. I figured that would be nice to do as well as all the planters. So these produce melons and carrots and fruits and all that stuff for the settlement and it actually produces way more than 35 food. I just don't have that many settlers assigned to it. And this little area here is outside the build area so technically I shouldn't have put anything out here so I didn't. I placed a chemistry station here, power armor workbench, and an armor workbench so you can kind of work on a little bit of everything here and then I put a general store for the settlers on this side of the building. Figure this is a settler only store. They come in here when they need stuff so they don't take from the traders available stock. This is a full weapons dealer. Again, do it yourself. Filled everything up. Looks really nice with a modern weapons dispenser and a weapons workbench. Down to the last two houses here. These are both covenant houses as well. They're just uh, row house style, uh, San Francisco style, or New York City style. And each building is slightly different inside. In this one, I have a lot of books. I figure this is the library for the settlement. They can come over here. This is a terminal that, in my imagination, is completely loaded with all the information that was saved from before the war. A couple of chairs and couches to sit on, as well as a restroom shower area for this building on this level. Anybody can come in and take a shower. That's totally up to them. Coming upstairs, you'll see there's only a few beds up here. And by a few, I mean five. It's more than I remember. But you can still get through, so they work. These doors, I tend to lock. This one isn't for some reason, but uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Lock. 100. See? Now settlers can't open it, but they can clip through it coming here to the next building and this one I turned into a laundry station or a laundromat for the settlement. Four washers, four dryers available to all of the settlers. Figure the person running the laundry would be right there or right there. And then a chair for when you're doing your laundry. And upstairs, just a few more beds and a bathroom with a couple of shower stalls. I think it came out really nice. It's a little more subtle. It's not quite as modern as some of the other builds I've done, like the fully enclosed settlements, but I wanted to do this one a little bit more natural to test a few things that I was trying out in another build. And it still looks nice. It still looks good. It fits in with the area. And I think it came out as best as I could do it with the assets I had. Let's go ahead and take a look at it at night. And to do that, we'll just come back to the entrance, change the time of day to night, and I'll be right back. So here we are at night, and as you can see, I didn't put any street lights out here. It's just your spotlights to keep a lookout for raiders and such. I did put lights on the water tower. I like to do that. I just think it looks cool all lit up. And then the natural light coming out of the buildings provides plenty of light for the settlement and looks pretty good while it's doing it. Looks like a natural town square here in the little shopping area and with the trees it kind of looks really set back in the woods yet kind of B&B &B kind of thing and I approve I should I built it so yeah that's it that is it that is Jamaica Plains rebuilt modernized ish and defended and staffed with settlers if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications so that you know when new videos are coming out. 
Use my Amazon affiliate links. It'll help the channel grow and allow me to do better videos and get better equipment, all that good stuff. Check the playlist for the other settlement builds and check out the rest of the channel. There's almost 700 videos, so I'm sure there's something there that you may like. The next settlement I'm going to be showing is actually the castle. That'll be coming in a couple of days, so keep a lookout for that. And, as always, I'll talk to you later.